proposal. You'll hear more about the uh, two potential at-large members. But by and large, the responsibilities and duties of the existing council members are largely intact. And Mike will uh, give us a discussion on the proposed uh, amendments and revisions. Thank you, Vince. Um, thank you for coming out tonight. This is one of our earlier presentations, and we were very excited to put this presentation <coughs> together and figure out what we wanted to talk to you about. In reality, it's everything we've done. In making a slide, it looked like this. We realized this would not work. Um, I'm standing for you from all of your eyes. So instead, we tried to boil it down into a couple um, buckets that we thought best summarize what we've done and the things that we think you would find important. The first of them was uh, addressing something that was brought up a little bit last year, which was increasing professionalism across City Hall. So this, we've added that deputies all need to have experience and or educational requirements that fit the job that they're going to be doing, and the role they're going to serve. We've also increased uh, autonomy for HR and IT. These are roles that, under the current charter, fall under a council member. HR falls under the mayor, IT falls under finance. The role they serve, though, is citywide may have access to information that touches everyone in the city hall. Uh, we wanted to remove any idea that someone, a council member, might exert undue influence. So really, these people should be answerable to council. We've made it that way now. They are truly answered to council. Um, we've also realigned certain functions to match responsibilities. So this included moving recreation to DPW, which the commission thought made sense given Rex's reliance on DPW for their facilities and fields. We've also moved risk and safety to legal. Source and safety comes out of the accounts department, actually wasn't in the prior the existing charter. By moving to legal, it better uh, puts the groups together that really have a, risk and safety really is a legal role. We've also removed unilateral appointments. There are, the, the role that commissions and boards and certain employees play is citywide. They have a massive role in how this city performs today and will in the future. For that reason, we made it now that the appointing official still has to appoint that person. <coughs> But that now requires the advice and consent from the entire city council. This way everyone will have a say in an individual that will be impacting the entire city. We've increased flexibility of city operations. An example of this is focusing more on functions rather than specific employees. City demands and resources change over time. And the more that we were pigeonholed into doing a specific thing, it was a burden to the city. We wanted to be more flexible to change as times change. And the last one is improving consistency and readability of the charter. You're all here, so I'm sure you've all read the charter. It is a <laughs> dense document. It is a document that at times is confusing. The 2001 group did a fantastic job. There are things that, in retrospect, may be better suited in separate sections, like the budget. The budget doesn't need to be exactly in the finance department commissioner. It is now a separate section. We made it sure all the commissioners have a similar template. So when you're looking at one commission, you know where to look for what they do, what are their responsibilities, what are their duties. Another revision we've, uh, we've added is expansion. So we have proposed expanding the city council from five to seven members. These two new members would be council members at large who have equal legislative power, but no departmental duty. Let me stress, equal legislative power. The vote that this person would have on the budget, on laws, on city policies, would be the same as existing council members. This was brought forward to address the concern of some residents that they but having that dual responsibility of being a legislator and a department head was just too much for, for their, the life that they lead. So this set question um, is a separate slide and will be a separate question on the ballot. So the two questions that will be on the ballot and just to remind you, it will be on the back of the ballot. So uh, remember to turn over your ballot uh, on November 6th. Uh, but the first question is, shall the Saratoga Springs City Charter be amended as proposed by the 2018 Charter Review Commission? The second question is, shall the Saratoga Springs City Charter be further amended to provide for two additional city council members whose authority shall be legislative only? This is broken down into two questions for two reasons. One of them is because state law requires it. The other is because the uh, commission desired it. It allows the public to make a determination and whether or not they want to enlarge city council to include two members at large. Now, the second question is in fact conditioned on the first question as being a further amendment. So we'll go through the scenarios a little bit later, but in order for 
the council to be enlarged to seven members, both questions have to pass uh, by the number of votes. So recently, we as a commission put together our financial analysis. And the purpose of this analysis is to show what the impact would be of adopting the new charter. So should question one, which as we discussed, is everything, all the amendments except for expansion, should that be approved? The expected financial impact is zero dollars. What has changed through question number one is city processes, city structure. There are no new hires. There are no new costs to bear for taxpayers. Question number two, on the other hand, should that be approved, this being expansion, it would be a cost. Uh, for our analysis, there was a debate about what cost to use and, and what numbers to, to base all of this on. The number that we know today is $14,500. That is what city council members made. So we use that as the basis for all our analysis. So if you were to assume $14,500 and no benefits, the estimated annual cost would be $31,218. I include that, so, so everyone understands, this is 0.07% of the 2018 adoption. I mentioned no benefits because that is also on the table. If someone is serving in this capacity it's because the idea of the commission was that this person has another, has a job, has other responsibilities, which may include insurance. So for that reason, benefits has yet to be determined whether it would or would not be included. So we did a secondary analysis. If it is $14,500 salary and full benefits, we pushed it to the max. We assumed the most expensive plan for a family that total cost is $81,846. That's 0.18% of the 2018 city budget. Both of these, should, should this uh, question number two be approved, this would impact the 2020 budget. So count the compensation associated with this expansion would go through a local law process. That would be public comment, public hearing, public notice. This mirrors what exists today. Under the existing charter, if count today's council wanted to increase the salary for the next elected body, next, next, next elected body, sorry about that, they would go through the local law process. If the, today's city council wanted to increase their own salary, they would have to go through a referendum. There is no scenario where a city council can increase their pay without their own pay, without the public having a direct say in the matter. Either a referendum or the local law process for the next group, and that includes public hearing. So, we decided to run through the scenarios a bit about what might happen. So should question one be approved, question two is not. <laughs> All the amendments other than expansion go into place January 1st. Council members, it remains to be five, and the cost is zero dollars. Should question one and two both be approved by both voters, all of the amendments go into place. The council expands after the 2019 election, in the January 1st, 2020, of the seven member council. This is where the cost may vary, but in, this is our, our estimated range using the numbers we discussed. Should question one not be approved by voters, and so this alludes to what Vince mentioned earlier, charter is changed, <laughs> council has five members. It does not matter what happens in question two at that point because it's dependent on question one. So with that, thank you for your time, for our presentation at least. Uh, we've left up here the link for more information. We have all of our minutes, all the documents related to the charter. Uh, we let everyone know that we'll be at a public forum in the library on the 23rd at 6.30 p.m. And I'm assuming everyone here is registered to vote, but just in case, the deadline is Friday, October 12th. If you are, make sure you tell everyone else you know. Thank you. All right. And now it's your floor. So questions you may have, we are, we're, we're here for that. So please. <laughs>